faculty members, students, dear friends. It's a big honor to be here with you this morning. Uh, and I must frankly say that speaking after <laughs> Father José Good is also a difficult mission. And added to that, I was given the uh, promotion this morning that uh, for the next five minutes I had been kind of promoted as an acting governor of Karnataka to make this address this morning, which is also not maybe a very easy task and certainly not in my usual area of competency. <laughs> Nevertheless, <laughs> I would like to maybe give a couple of uh, words to this uh, conference. First, I would, first of all, I would like to, uh, to thank you very much for the uh, um, very uh, professional organization of this conference. Uh, since the very first time I came here, I've been always impressed by the uh, organization, the professionalism, the vision which you have. This is my third visit to uh, Christo Gianti College here, and I I had this feeling from the very first moment. Um, we get on well together. We we are we are doing things already. Uh, we are showing common values, ideas, projects. We want to have this high quality, more international exposure for students, for faculty. Uh, this we do share. Um, I'm also glad to be here. Uh, and I think this is maybe also an example of the uh, power of uh, Indian technology now that even a Frenchman can speak English in Bangalore. So <laughs> that's usually unusual. So, so having said that, I will try to uh, add a couple of words. Um, as an introduction, I had a quote from uh, Audrey Hepburn who, who said, a quality education has the power to transform societies in a single generation provide children with the protection they need from the hazards of poverty, labor exploitation and disease, and to give them the knowledge, the skills and confidence to reach their full potential. I have been coming to India for the last 16 years, I think, and of course I do not need to tell you <laughs> how, many the, how much the country has changed with 16 years, and also for me, uh, how much still is ahead to do. And um, it is very impressive for me as a visitor to India to, uh, well, to realize, well, I know it, but to realize that I am talking to the persons who are going to train the managers of the biggest country in the world in 20 years, one of the fastest growing economy, probably the biggest democracy, and all this in a context where technology is changing so fast that Father Jose Kuti mentioned Facebook and uh, YouTube and other things. I mean, 10 years ago, we had, they didn't exist at all. So probably something else will be existing in five years ahead. We don't know what it's going to be. And uh, I think it's a fantastic idea to have a conference on uh, to exchange these ideas on what can happen and what needs to be done and what needs to be addressed. This is really a very unique opportunity. I'm really pleased to, uh, to be here, I, I must say that. Um, we were trying to, to find what are the, uh, <clears throat> sorry, maybe a prerequisites to our quality education. Uh, just to name a few, uh, we wrote down our quality feedback and monitoring system is certainly very important. It's more than just the performance of the teacher and how you could, you have to measure it, but how you do it, and it's more, more than just this. Uh, another prerequisite is uh, transparency in the process of what we are doing every day, the way we work, the way we, the way we communicate. Another one is the conduct of classes. I think we all moved from systems which were more traditional, more uh, buttoned down and uh, more, <coughs> sorry, traditional maybe, to a, a completely uh, new and different way of teaching and uh, sharing experiences and trying to share the models with our students. I think we all need a well-designed evaluation component. We have to listen to the workplace needs. What do they need? What do they need today? What are the needs in 20 years? We are training students who are going to work for the next 40, 45, 50 years, maybe more. Uh, this is important. How can we prepare them to this? <coughs> Our development models might be different. I mean, Europe is pretty no more what it used to be or in the last maybe or two centuries, but still we're there and still we are training people and this is important and we have to do it well. Uh, taking into account many things like development of society, 
Our Father Jose Coty mentioned there, I think, equity, access, social responsibility, responsibility to society, responsibility to environment. All these things are crucial for everyone in India also, in Europe also. And uh, I think we all share a passion and we all need a passion from faculty and administrators. Um, all these are very international values. I mean, I could say the same words to any audience, I think, in Europe or uh, Africa or South America. Uh, I think they really matter. So um, maybe trying to um, give a couple of thoughts and ideas of the way our we are trying to act on this or to be, to be active and reactive uh, at Normandy Business School in France. I choose to uh, maybe say a couple of words or give a couple of ideas on something we call action learning pedagogy. Okay, so I am not going to make a big speech about the theory, the various schools of action learning pedagogy. As you have heard before, my main task is to uh, connect people in various countries, organize student and faculty exchanges, I have not done research on the action learning pedagogy itself, so I would not be competent to uh, be too much on this. But for those who are interested, just yesterday, two of my colleagues have an article who has been published yesterday in the American Journal of Business Education, which says 12 years of action learning at EM Normandy monitored field project as regular pedagogical activities. Okay, so I'm just going to say a couple of words about what is in there. and. Uh, why are we working this way and uh, not at all as a model, just as a couple of thoughts and ideas to contribute to the debate of the, the discussions today. <clears throat> I think we started from the point that uh, I mentioned just before the uh, prerequisite for quality education <clears throat> and we do have to listen to what the workplace needs. As a business school, of course, we're very careful to what companies are saying. They hire our young graduates, they finance partly the school, so this is important. Some of the critics they made in the last year was that some of the young MBA students were too analytical, short-term oriented, narrow-minded. This is what we heard. Some of them show little interest for longer-term learning and self-development. And of course, this is a point you have to think over and address at some point. Sometimes management, education and business schools <coughs> can be criticized for focusing too much on rigor and abstract thinking, sometimes. And some companies say, or the business world sometimes say that aspiring managers learn about the practice of management instead of developing their skills to practice it. Okay. Education is a mixture of both theory and practice. So given these critics, which came from our stakeholders and partners, we try to um, bring an answer. And the, action, the, the answer, one of the answers we have been thinking of with other uh, professors and other schools in France and Canada, in fact, have been to implement the, what we call, or what they call, action learning pedagogy. The idea behind it is um, learning how to act in a real work situation. So this gone beyond a conceptual analysis of a problematic situation and implies direct contact and discussion with other managers and workers. And the objective and the consequence which we see is a results in personal development but also in our organizational development of participants. Um, so, we have six principles uh, which we use in this action learning pedagogy in, in our small experience. Again, this is limited to what we know and it's not a word principle, just an idea. <clears throat> the first principle is to um, find a problem or a challenge which is of high importance to an individual, a team and or an organization. The problem should be urgent and it should not have an easily identifiable solution. The learners are responsible for finding such a solution. The principle number two is we create groups or teams composed of three to four individuals. They should have a diversity of background and experience to acquire various perspectives and to encourage fresh viewpoints. How do we do that? We have all our students, all together we have 2,000 students on two uh, campuses in Normandy in France. 
every year, every student must work on a field project like this one. They do not choose in which company they're going to work. They do not choose their co-workers. So we do everything in advance. We call the company. The companies give us a real problem, a real question. And we decide student A, student F, student Z are going together working on finding a real solution for a real company, which we choose. So they do not choose which other students are going to work on the subject. They do not choose where they're going to, to go, and they do not choose a problem either. It's pretty much like real life. That's why this is called action learning pedagogy. This takes place for five to six weeks. During the five to six weeks, of course, this is monitored both by the company and from the school. And at the end, there is an evaluation and a presentation. This is the way we do it. During the uh, mission, uh, we have a process of uh, insightful questioning and reflective listening. So the focus is mainly on questions which enable to identify possible solutions before taking action. And we think it also contributes to group dialogue and cohesiveness. A fourth principle <clears throat> is that an action taken by the group itself, the group of students, or at least the insurance that the group recommendation will be implemented in the company or in the organization. So it's not a pure theoretical project. If the students are recommending a solution, the company is also committed to try and implement it. And we think this is a mandatory basis for the critical dimension of reflection. It means that the students are taking the task extremely seriously and that the company or the organization is also committed to trust people who come from outside for a short duration, are usually much younger, not recognized as officially competent as, but are bringing ideas and solutions. <coughs> a fifth principle is a commitment to learning. Action learning places the same emphasis on the learning and the development of individuals and the team as it does on the solving of problems. Sixth and last principle, an action learning coach who helps on the group focus, uh, sorry, who helps the group focus on the important aspect of the problem as well on the urgency to find a solution. Time is limited to five to six weeks, so it cannot go on for months and years. It has to be done quickly. And as I said before, students arrive on a Monday morning in a company they have never been before, and they do not know the people they're going to work with, or very limitedly. So it's really a very time-intensive process, and it works very well. So the coach helps the team members to reflect on what they are learning and how they are solving problems. The coach can be a member of the group or not. And maybe two more rules on this, the way we, we see it. Um, recommendations which students have to give should only be made in response to questions. People should think questions first, which enhances listening and reflecting. Direct relation between the number and quality of questions and the eventual final quality of the actions and learnings is very important. And the other rule is that the action learning coach has the power to intervene but his mission is to help the group learn. He is not involved, he or she, is not involved in the resolution of the problem itself. So, this was just something I just wanted to share you to give you a couple of uh, ideas of experience. Uh, if some of you are later interested to know more, I'd be very happy to provide the link to the article or to have a further bilateral or discussion with a smaller group. Um, again, I would like to uh, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to share this couple of ideas with you and uh, wish you a very, very uh, successful and fruitful conference and uh, anything we can do to uh, participate, bring ideas and uh, contribute uh, will be absolutely welcome of our side. And uh, thank you very much again to uh, the college for giving me the opportunity. Thank you very much.